friends, how's it going? It's me, Betty Jean. So this video is a collab with my friend Millie. Her channel is Bad to the Brow. I will have her channel linked down below. She came to me asking if I've seen Leisha's video when she did a kind of palette inspired by Kingdom Hearts. I will have that video linked down below as well because that is the inspiration for this video. But regardless, I hadn't seen it at the time, but after watching it, I loved it. And we decided to do a collab where we do a makeup look based on each other's favorite video games. That's pretty much how it goes. She sent me four video games that she loves a lot and I sent four that I love a lot and then I kind of picked for her to do which one I wanted her to do out of her collection and she picked the one to do out of mine. So the one that she decided to pick for me was Paper Mario and the Thousand Year Door. I love this game so much. This was on the GameCube and it was iconic. It was such a good game. I've played through it so many times. Zane loves it just as much as I do. I adore this game so, so much. Basically what we decided to do was we went through our collections and picked out six shades to kind of create a small palette based on the color scheme of the game. And mine's really hard because you can see there's just lots of bold, bright colors, lots of them. So I spent a while last night swatching different things and trying to just kind of pinpoint different colors that I felt like kind of encompass the main cover of the game as well as the game in general. So I was able to narrow it down to just three palettes, which is really cool. I don't have a whole lot of singles, so we didn't really do single shadows. Well, at least I didn't. I don't know what she did. And first of all, I went ahead and picked Cave Dweller from the Menagerie Cosmetics Dragon Child palette. It's a really dark blue, and I felt like this color just kind of goes with his whole overall motif because he always has those dark blue overalls and I just felt like that was a really good color to have in it. And if you've played the game, I feel like this color kind of stands out a lot in the Boggly Woods section of the game. It's very dark and blue and I don't know, more on that cool toned end. And that's a really heavy part of the game. Next from the Juvia's Place of Freak palette, I went in with Cameroon, which is just this more grungy brown kind of color. It's not really too dark, not too light. It's just kind of a nice cinnamony kind of color. And I picked that based on the map that's in his hands right here because the game is based around this map. Like you're going from different places, place to place, because the map is telling you where to go. So you can collect the crystal stars and save the princess and all that stuff. Typical Mario things, you know? So I just felt like this was a really important color to have because the whole game is centered around that map and it's the main middle point of that cover. And the other four shades are honestly all from the Ace Bute Flare palette, which was really convenient that I was able to get most of them in one palette, and I really wasn't trying to do that. It just kind of happened. So the next standout shade, of course, is his hat and shirt because they are bright red. That is the iconic Mario color. I swatched so many reds, you guys don't even know, because it's more of an orange red, but it's not too orange. It's definitely red, and it's bright, but it's not too bright, but it's still really bright. So I went with saffron in this sense because it's very hot red, but it's not to the point where it's too neon, I feel like. I feel like it's a really true orange red, and this is, this is what I came up with. And next I wanted to just kind of encompass the colors in the actual Paper Mario logo, which is the yellow and the orange. This is another one I swatched a lot of yellows, and looking on the actual lettering, the yellow is really bright, but when I swatched the bright yellow next to everything, it didn't look as good. So I ended up deciding to go with Cider just because I felt like it flowed with the color story more. And this game does have a lot of really, like it's a bright game, but it also has really dark, more grungy kind of tones throughout the different levels. So I just felt like this yellow matched the whole feel a lot more. And it's not like this is a dark yellow. It's still a really vibrant yellow. It's just not like a neon yellow. And I felt like it was appropriate. And then for the orange in that lettering, I went with Pumpkin, which I don't really have a crazy explanation for this. An orange is an orange. Not really much to it other than that. And I just felt like it was necessary with this look. The orange will flow nicely with the red and the yellow and with those browns. And it's a really big statement piece in that main part of the font on the cover. And I had a really hard time narrowing down what I wanted the sixth shade to be because like I said, there are so many colors. I could have done green for Yoshi, I could have incorporated yellow for the Koopas, Peach's hair, the dress for Peach, but what I ended up deciding to do, which might be kind of boring, is kind of focusing on this really dark, grungy, dark brown color. How many times am I going to say dark in the same sentence? That's in the Thousand Year Door font, because I feel like it's good to have a really dark matte deep shade. This is Acorn. In a makeup look, especially because I have such bright, bold colors, I need something to break it up. And again, there are really dark, grungy tones. Like the main 
kind of home base of this game is in Rogueport, and I feel like it's very dark and grungy, dirty-ish, you know, and I feel like this color kind of just come up a lot in the game because it is just kind of a really good base color. So this is kind of the color story I came up with. I even asked Zane's opinion if he liked this kind of color story with this game and he thought it fit really well and I'm really excited to play with it. Lots of primary colors, all mattes, no shimmers. I didn't go shimmery with this, which is very shocking for me. I don't know exactly what look I'm going to do with it, but I'm excited to do something. Let's just zoom on in. All right, my eyes are primed with my Smashbox lid primer. As always, I don't set it because I just don't prefer to. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start by taking Acorn with a tiny brush all the way from inner to outer corner, just kind of blending it out. And then once I have that laid down the way I want it to, I'm gonna take Cameroon and blend that out as well. Nothing too crazy. I don't think I'm gonna really wing it out too much. I think I want it to just stay nice and blown out and rounded. I realized that I didn't even really talk about Millie's content because I was so excited just to get into this video. This video is such a cool idea. I'm so happy she thought of it. But she's so sweet. She is so incredibly talented. She does a lot of four looks, one palette videos. She does lots of reviews, first impressions. Her eye looks are just so stunning though. She has so much talent. I'm so in awe. Every time I watch one of her videos, she's just so good at what she does. She's really sweet and encouraging and I just really think you guys would like her. So make sure you check her out. Tell her I sent you. You won't regret it. And now taking that Cameroon shade, like I told you, with a slightly larger blending brush just to begin to fluff and blend these edges. Nothing too, too wild and crazy. Thinking about this game makes me want to play it again, and we play it so often, I really don't need to play that game again right now. Now I'm going to take that cider shade, that yellow, with just a just a slightly, slightly larger blending brush than the one I was used previously, just to blend above this top edge up here, all the way up in my eyebrow zone. And don't judge my eyebrows, guys. I am so lazy with them lately. All I do is run some brow gel through them because my bangs are so long, you can't see them anyways, so just let me be lazy. I'm gonna go back in with that second brush just to Re-intensify that middle shade. I'm not dipping into more shadow though because these shades are just so pigmented You don't have to dip in a whole lot and now I'm gonna cut the crease and I'm basically just gonna follow my lid zone Like I just want a solid rounded cut crease all the way from inner to outer Because I'm not sure why I just know I want to do this. I don't have a total plan with this look But technically we have three shades down. We only have three to go, but I am gonna use the yellow somewhere So just taking my ColourPop no filter concealer as I always do I popped some on my lid and looked up so I could see where my concealer would transfer, so I can see where I should cut the crease. And then I'm just going in with this flat brush to carefully and precisely finish cutting out the lid. I'm going in with a smaller, more flat brush because I wasn't able to get as precise as I wanted. So now that I have it cut the way I want it to be, I'm going back in with that first shade Acorn, that darkest color. I'm going to start packing some of this in the outer and inner corner, just in the very outer and inner corner. I haven't fully decided if we're doing a full on halo or if we're doing something a little different. I have kind of an idea now. The utility people are working outside my apartment complex and they're being very rude and loud and I'm over it. They've been here for days. Like, what could they possibly be doing for that long? And I'm just taking that second brush just to very lightly buff this edge right here because I felt like it was getting a little, little intense. Now I'm taking that yellow shade again and I'm taking this teeny tiny little e.l.f. concealer brush. And I'm going to start popping that right up against where the cut crease is. And I'm just being very careful and precise because I don't want this to look like it's blended into the cut crease. I still want it to have that cut. But because the yellow's right there, I have to be careful. Because if it goes over the line at all, it's just gonna look like I don't know how to blend. Basically like that, I'm just gonna take this 
brush that I use for acorn just to smudge the edge where that yellow is touching the acorn shade. I am so sorry if you can hear them working outside. It's so annoying, but there's nothing I can do about it. And now I'm gonna take saffron, which is that really bright red, and I'm taking that on a little pencil brush. This is specifically the Luxie 141, but it's really, really small. And I'm gonna start popping this right up against the lashes. I'm making sure I heavily pack this, and I'm not just gonna put a little sheer amount of it because I don't want it to look pink. I do want it to look Nice and red, which is not too hard to do with this shade because it's very pigmented. I'm just doing this until there's just just a tiny sliver of concealer right in between the yellow and the red. Just going through with that brush I use for Acorn just to smudge between the brown and the red. And now I'm taking Pumpkin on this blending brush from Luxie. This is the 1 to 1. It's a little bit bigger. I'd prefer a smaller one, but I don't have another small one that's clean. So I'm just going in lightly just to smudge this orange in between the orange and the yellow. Basically just going back and forth between my different brushes with these different shades until it looks kind of the way I want it to. I was kind of going for the way the ombre is on the actual lettering where it goes from the yellow to the red. Kind of wanted to incorporate-ish that into this and I kind of like it. It's different. So now I need to take that Cave Dweller shade which is that dark blue and I'm going to pop this in my lower lash line. And then I'm just going to take a random pencil brush with no product just to buff this out. I'm taking a little detail brush now with Cave Dweller just to pop on my waterline. This is not going to last long. I'm sure it's going to go away. But I just want some more blue depth right up here. I'm also going to smudge it underneath my eye really tight. You could of course just use a blue liner, but I don't feel like getting up. And finally, I'm just going to take that yellow shade once more to pop in the inner corner. Just for an extra little pop of something, it's not going to do much because it's not shimmery. And I'm just taking my face highlight, which was the Pop Beauty Celestial Light Highlight, just to pop on top of that yellow to pretend like it's shimmery. I've created this now, so I'm going to do the other eye, pop on my lashes, lipstick, all that jazz, and we'll finish this video up. This was very in-depth, holy cow. So this is the final look. I hope you like it. I really like how it came out. I think it looks cool. I think it captures the essence of the palette and the game. My lashes are the Bold Face Makeup Power Pair Lashes. My lipstick is the Dose of Colors Cork Liquid Lipstick. I like how this looks all put together. I feel cute and I'm gonna wear it all day at work. And thanks for coming up with this idea, Millie. This was fun. It was challenging just to kind of really narrow down the shades I wanted to use. And then I really like this look. I would not have created this look without this whole thing happening. So thank you. Make sure you guys check her out if you haven't already. She's so awesome. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know if you liked it. Maybe I can do more kind of themed palettes in the future. Obviously, I'm not making palettes because I don't have singles, but you know what I mean. If you're not already, please hop over to my Instagram. It's Beat Bean. Follow me there. I post every single day. And don't forget to subscribe here before you leave. I post five days a week, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Let me know what videos you want to see on my channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Okay, bye.